Look, I'm gonna level with you. I watch a lot of Notion content, and a lot of that information that they're saying in these videos isn't actually helping you to be more productive. So in this video, I'm going to show you five mistakes that you're making in Notion that aren't actually helping you to be more productive. Because at the end of the day, we want to be more productive with our time. So we can either work less and get more done in a shorter time period, or so we can get more done and start achieving things faster. The number one mistake, this is such a pet peeve, is having columns as your to-do list. You've probably seen stuff like this. You got a Monday, you got a Tuesday, you got a Wednesday, blah, blah, blah. This, come on, seriously. We gotta move, he's gonna blow the columns. This is one of the worst things I have ever seen. You cannot say that this is a productive setup. And then what people do is, you know, they have their tasks here, do thing, do other thing. I did, remember, remember I did the thing? and so on and so forth for all the days. This is not a productive way to work. What are we gonna do instead? We're going to use databases. Now databases sound really boring and you know, you can make this look really pretty. So I understand that there's, uh, it's a lot more fun to use this. However, databases come with a whole variety of benefits that doing columns doesn't have. Forward slash, database, table view. We're gonna create a new one, all tasks. I'm presuming if you've been using a setup like this, you like seeing your entire week. Don't worry, we can do that too with a database. So we're going to go on these three dots. We're going to click on layout, and then we're going to change to a calendar. Now by default, it's going to show the entire month. So what I'm going to do is click on the three dots again and change this layout here from show calendar as month to show calendar as week. Now, as you can see, it looks quite a bit squished here. So we're going to go up to the top, click on these three dots, and do full width. This looks better already. So how are we going to add tasks to this? Well, as an example, let's have do thing from uh, up here, very creative. What I'll do is click on add an item. Now I'll write do thing. Now, as you can see, it shows up here and we can drag it to and from. Don't worry, it will look much better and there's going to be a lot more complicated stuff going on in the background. What we want here is to have a property that allows us to tick whether it's been done or not, just like we have over here. So I'll click back and go to add property and I'll choose checkbox. I'll call that done. And what I'm going to do is click again on these three dots, click on properties. And then what we want to do is show the done property. So we'll click this little eye icon here. And now, as you can see, do thing, the done shows up underneath. Now you can tick it off to see that you've done it. Now, hypothetically, you might want to see only tasks that you haven't done in front of you. It's going to get very overwhelming seeing every single thing that you've done because uh, you might have a really long list. So to make sure that we're only seeing tasks that we haven't done, what we're going to do is right click on calendar, duplicate and call this uncomplete. You. Now in this view called uncomplete, we're seeing the same thing at the moment. So what we wanna do is add a filter, add advanced filter, and we're going to have this filter be where the done is unchecked. That means we're only seeing tasks here that haven't been done. So now let's say I've done the thing, click done, it gets removed. So the reason we duplicated the calendar here before is now we can actually still see all the old tasks that we've done in here. So let's say you accidentally ticked this, I'll just tick that there. And now you can see it appears again in the uncomplete. Now that's not the only reason we're doing a database instead of columns. The main reason that we're doing it is a database can then be seen in a bunch of different views and we can connect it with other databases using relations. But as I'm building in my ultimate productivity dashboard, I don't have a name for it yet. That's just a, a working title. Each task will have multiple properties to it. That way we can actually connect and see it in different views. So I'll give you just a sample example. Let's say as an example, you want to see all the times you've gone to the gym this month. Doing it in a view like this is very difficult. You can't track it, it's not very easy, and you can't connect that data to a bunch of different things. So let's do it in this database. Now, what we could do is add a property and create a select or a multi-select. But when you create a database, automatically this tag here is created. So we can work with that to make it easy. But in case you don't have that, I'll just delete it to show you how it works. We'll do delete there, add property, and let's just do a select category. Now that I've created this property, I'm gonna click away and show you how this works. Let's do a new item and say run. Category will be fitness. And when you click away, you can't see fitness. So let's say you want to see not only the done feature, but also what life category this belongs in. So we're going to go back to the three dots, click on properties. You can see this category here. We're going to click on that and then it will show here. As you can see, it shows up. Let's say you want the done underneath as well. 
That's also easy to do. We're going to go on the three dots, click on properties. We're just going to click on these six dots and drag them up. Cool, now we can see the fitness tab here. Okay, but right now this seems quite similar to this. It's just got a tag associated to it. I'm tagging it now. How does that help? So what we're going to do is create a new view, which is the full month. So I'm going to go up, click on calendar, duplicate, and call this fitness. Now we're going to go to the three dots and change this layout to show not the week, but the full month. So as you can see on this tab, we're still just seeing the week, this one just the week, but in this view here, we're seeing the full month. But as you can see here, we're seeing do the thing. We don't wanna see anything that's not related to fitness. So we're going to click on filter, add advanced filter, and we just want stuff that's been tagged with fitness. So what we're going to do is change where the category is and then tick in fitness. Now you can see where category is fitness. And that's why the run is showing up here. Now, most likely if it's in the past, you've already done it. So that will be ticked in. And I'll just add some more items here, just so you can see. So then here you can get an understanding of how much you've actually been working out. This is just a quick example of showing you why databases work better than columns. If you want me to go more extensively into this, please just drop a comment and let me know what details you want me to get into. Wait, hold up, pause the show. We got one bonus productivity hack. I cannot recommend Notion Plus enough. If you're watching this, I presume you're already using Notion, but Notion Plus is amazing. I have an affiliate link in the description. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything more. It's just, you know, so they know I sent you uh, and I get a little commission from that. The main reasons I recommend it is unlimited file uploads. You can actually upload much larger files, uh, which you can't do in the free version, which is super important if you're like me and you're building up a business database. So you have all of your files in there. You might have videos in there. You might have uh, just a lot heavier files. Next thing, the 30 day page history, a few months back, I accidentally deleted uh, a pretty important page. I absolutely panicked, uh, but but I had plus back then. And uh, yeah, it was in the page history. Could restore it, which really helped. And then the last thing, if you run a business and you have uh, a bunch of employees, or if you are a freelancer and you might wanna do your invoicing or have a custom client dashboards for every single client, being able to invite up to hundred guests is super helpful. Link in the description to uh, Notion Pro. If you sign up with my affiliate, that'd be, that would mean a lot. And um, yeah, okay, back to it. Notion productivity mistake number two. Don't have widgets. What the hell is a widget? I've done a whole thing about this in the past. You do not need to have a weather widget on your dashboard. This is pointless unless you are a weatherman. You're not going to believe who's behind you. Rain or shine. Who? The weatherman, don't you watch the news? Or live on a sailboat. Why did you sell me this boat for a dollar? There is no reason to have a weather widget. Your Notion dashboard, when you log on, should have only the things that you need. Do not get distracted by anything else. If you're seeing a bunch of images, a clock widget, you have a clock in front of you. You're on the computer or you're on the phone. You don't need it. Don't use widgets. Most of the time, they're pointless. There's some good ones, I guess, but a weather widget is pointless. What's the weather supposed to be like tonight? I don't know, why? I'm sorry, we'll move on to the next one. Use emojis to quickly identify similar database entries. So I'll show you an example using this. I'll just delete these real quick. What we want is a little emoji to quickly identify things that are the same. Is there a slice of pomegranate in there as well? No, darling. So running, for example, could have a little emoji of a <laughs> shoe. So now when you're scrolling this, you can quickly see a shoe icon. So now when I drag this out like this, blah, 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 blah. Everyone, this is blah, blah. Cool. You can see a bunch of shoes and it's just a quick way of identifying it. So if I go back to the calendar, I'm just going to do a duplicate here and do full month going to go to layout. I'm going to change this from a week to the month. And we don't want to filter here as I want to see everything, whether I've done it or not. I'm going to change do thing and add an emoji to that. Typically, if I have a red emoji, that means this is important. You have to do Now we might not want to manually do this every time. Every single time you do go for a run, you have to find the shoe emoji. That leads me on to my next point. Use templates for everything. Now, another reason to use databases over columns like this is the power of templates. So we'll go up here, click on this down arrow, and you can see here, new template. So let's click on that. Here, let's say run, add icon, and I'll select the shoe icon. Then we'll click on new category and select fitness. Now I'll show you why this is helpful. Now let's say I ran today. I click on the plus, click on run, and now automatically, everything's been pre-selected. So now it took me all of a sudden one second to say that I've been on a run. I don't have to fill in a bunch of details. It's already done for me. So I'll just delete this and show you how to take it one step further. I guess that's a running pun. <laughs>
go back to this and run here, you're going to click on these three dots and click on edit. Let's say every time you go for a run, you want to track the uh, the route that you took when running. What's the route? It's uh, Florida. Here you can then create a bunch of questions in the template. So this will then come up every time you click on this new template. So route taken, how did I feel? How fast did I run? As you can tell, I don't run a lot, so I don't know what kind of questions a runner would ask themselves. Stop pooping. But now when we click away, and we click on the plus and select run. As you can see, these questions automatically come up here and you can make this really intricate with a bunch of different things. For example, generating invoices, it now becomes a simple click. When you're going to journal, all of a sudden you just click journal and then you have all of your prompts there. So when you click here, you can see run. You can have all of the different templates that you want. This can make creating tasks really, really easy. And honestly, using templates has probably doubled my productivity in Notion, probably even more. I've significantly cut down my admin hours per week just by using templates. Everything you do on a consistent basis and requires the same repetitive work can become a template. Now the last productivity mistake in Notion that I see is having a bunch of different databases. To my point earlier about tracking running and journaling and everything in this database, if you can get away with having one or two or three databases at most, but you're just viewing them in different filters, it will save you a lot of time. So let's say this is your main dashboard. I'm just going to delete this now. You might have a bunch of different categories in your life. Let's say uh, running and work and blah, blah, blah. Everyone, this is blah, blah, blah. Let's say you want to view the running stuff on a separate page, which is all about your fitness. You don't have to make that a separate database. You can view this database, the all tasks database, on another page. So I'll show you how to do that. We'll go up here and create a little menu up here. Do forward slash and do page. Let's call this fitness. Add this inspiring cover. And then here, what we're going to want to do is make sure we're selecting the same database. So in fitness, we'll do forward slash database, select table view. Now, when you click on that, your most recent databases will actually come up. Or if yours isn't showing up here, you can just start searching. So I'll do all tasks. And as you can see, it comes up. So I'll click on that. Now let's go back up here to the three dots, make this a full screen. We don't just want the week, we want the full month. Change it to say month. Now let's right click on this full month, rename fitness only. And now we're going to change the filter to be exactly that. We just want fitness. Change the category to contain fitness. Now you might not want to see all tasks up here. So we're going to click on the three dots, click on layout and untick this for show database title. Now, don't worry, that is just changing for this page. So if I go back to this page, you can see it still says all tasks up here. This is just taking the information from that database and showing it here, but with different views for this. Now, as you can see on this page, I have just my fitness stuff. So below, I might want to have progress pictures and all of that. If you want to learn more about creating the perfect Notion workout tracker, click on this video. Or if you want to learn how to create a perfect journal system in Notion, then click on this video here.